So, the job to be done today is to be sealing and lock of patches on this area. I have a good bit of bottom done already. And I put a wee bit on there. The ceiling's slightly going up the way. But, yeah, probably bond that and stick a few beads on, do that whole nib. Again, that whole wall's off, so we'll need probably PVA to bond it and skim. And of course, we bit of sand cement work to do underneath the stairs. And did a video on this wall here, how I got it ready for the skim coat. And obviously, two land walls go right up. Don't look as big on the camera, but they're pretty big, pretty tall. And that will need bonded out too, that will be lip. So have all the skim coat on and I always get asked what's my favourite spatula and I do think the Tizak one's definitely up there uh, it has a metal blade, a changeable blade and leaves, leaves it all nice and flat and if there is any massive massive sort of dips it always picks them up and then you can throw another pot fall into it and get it straighter but yeah, I'm up full height on the stilts here, so I'm not terribly comfortable on them. I haven't been on the stilts in quite a bit of time, so yeah, just getting the burns on them again. And obviously, you all know the higher you go, the sort of more wobbly they are, but not too bad. Not a massive ceiling, um, just have to sort of be careful with have some sheets down, tight the floor a bit. But yeah, definitely think this is, if not, my favourite, it's definitely up there with my favourite spatula. And uh, like I say, a changeable blade, so if it wasn't bent or damaged, you could stick a new one on. But it just, for me, it flattens it in, lovely. Takes a lot of lines out, and again, it's a bit of a straight edge, so you will, you'll see anything really bad, it'll pick it up straight away. So you'll be able to see, taking out these lines here. Well, you can already notice where the angle I've pulled out, how much flatter it is compared to where I haven't hit. Uh, again, some ceilings I'll just go around maybe two, three foot out and pull that. And then other ones like this, I'll sort of hit the whole thing a quick flat. As you see there. But yeah, definitely. Definitely worth getting if you're getting into plastering or you're serious about plastering. Definitely some of them spatulas or speed skims would be worth looking at. Um, again, you could get it all pretty good with just a hawk and trowel. But, um, you know, just sort of speeds you up. Like, I could technically let this all sit, say, 15 20 minutes before I trowel it again. I do usually hit it all with the spatula. And then I go about again and trial it all up again just to make sure I fill any wee holes, take out any wee lines missed or you know, any stop starts where you sort of it's you're better to start if you are gonna walk a ceiling with a spatula, better to start with the angle and do a full run with it, other than sort of just starting in the middle again because you can leave yourself tiny wee sort of start lines basically and you will need to fill them out and trial them out. Well, like, like I'm showing you here, once you start on the, your angle, you don't have any of that. See, definitely, definitely speeds you up. It's a lot quicker hitting up one of these than it would be with a trial. And again, I do trial it all again, pre pretty much straight away. I'll maybe wash up my hawk, wash up the spatula, so make sure the bucket and drill is washed, and then trial it up straight away. Um, if I have somebody in help me or you know part of a team, then. I would just start trialling straight away back onto the first ceiling or back to where it was first coated and start trialling up. But yeah, definitely find the spatula is good guys. Um, don't show it, show it that much but definitely definitely worth investing in if you're serious about plastering. Um, they do a wee bit of a wide angle here, just above the door. And instead of patching that I just brought it right down. Just sort of would be a wee bit better than a patch and it would break up the angles easily for me so that when I come back patch the walls it won't be so so difficult 
And again, just using the Rafina water brush and actually a rag knife finishing towel for this one. Um, I did put it all on with my Rafina premium towel. I think it's the stainless steel one. Um, that's what I laid everything on with and trialed up the first stages. This is the third trial. I think I give it an extra one after this again just to, to polish it up that little bit more. Hoping to get some footage of all the patches all painted up and see what you think guys. And you know, it can be a very hard thing to do is patch. But obviously re-skimming all the walls sometimes isn't an option. Or you know, sometimes it's good speed as well. What can be done faster. So again, the tools used obviously the stilts here. Um I think next time a couple more things to do, I think I'll I'll bring the bigger stilts and the refiner. The premium refiner stainless steel trial is used to lay it on and get the first couple of trials flattened in for the ceiling and the bottom. And then this is a black knife trial for finishing. It's quite quite nice cut on it. I think it's a refiner water brush I have and I used again at Pointsman Hawk that I have. Definitely feels like a nice hawk. Um, I haven't put it down ever since I get used to it. It took me about a week to sort of get used to it with cement and stuff as well, sand and cement. But once I was used to it, it was all good. And I just have the step ladders and stuff to help me get up and down on the stilts. Obviously, they're a bit higher than usual. And after I get the scene all shined up and polished, I'll get all the patches on. I don't think I have any footage of that, but like I said, I'll try and get some footage of it all painted up and a wee bit more work possibly to do here so hopefully be able to get it all we after picture so you just can see it all finished up like I say a bit dark as it's kind of drizzly outside and again there is a light or sorry a window on the door but it is a hallway normally are quite dark sort of areas and again when I super flex I normally leave it until it sort of pulls in, it's a bit dry to touch and it won't turn on you and you also, you can see the wee bits that are turning brown that's kind of a good indicator for me and what I don't know maybe tell anybody learning plastering that's a good indicator to know that what, what stage the plaster's at the best way to actually know of how it's, how it's going is actually just to touch it with your fingertips and that'll get you better knowledge of when you should trial, just touching it and feeling it as timings vary in this house for instance there's not much air flow here so it won't dry because of that but it's still quite warm inside as you can see I'm wearing a t-shirt so it is warm inside which will affect the plaster it will set quicker and again your backgrounds and stuff make a big difference if it's older plasterboard it will suck in quicker if you know you float it over old red brick or something it might dry quicker and or again if you're plastering over a bond that's been sitting for a day it could be quite hot you might need to PVA it so again timings on the plaster for me to turn around and say oh I put on my first coat and then I washed out and I mixed another bit 15 minutes later put on my second coat and then I trialled it in straight away and then let it sit 20 minutes then I'll trial it again they, they'll always just be approximate timings because like I say the weather temperature and the background the suction of the background everything's going to have different effects on the plaster and again it's something you only really gain by knowledge of actually doing it you can't really you can't really get that just from watching the video you kind of will have to get dirty get the hog and trial going and stick your fingers in the plaster and go right that's very soft that's okay and if you feel it firm enough you say to yourself right that's that's it getting firmed up nice time to flatten it in and then you feel it again and go right it's it's getting a lot drier just less moisture coming off maybe time for another wet trial and so forth you know you you will you'll you'll pick up so much that way um, more than if I just tell you it's 20 minutes, 15 minutes 
Um, I do plan on doing videos where I give away a wee bit more of that, I'll sort of say approximately the timings. Again, the plasters are all different, I'm using, this is from the blue bags, they're, it's meant to be like a two hour set and then they have red bags of carlite which is like a three hour set and then we have the multi skim as well which again is like a two and a half hour set. Um, again they did change the ball in there recently, it takes like five hours to set or something. Um, not very, very good at all. But yeah, that's again that's where the wrap sets and the sort of the additives come in handy where if you know this bottle's gonna take too long, you can maybe put a wee cup full of that in for every half bucket of water or something, speed it up and see as you're just given for patching. And again if you find you're struggling the stuff's tightening too quickly in the bucket, you can put in the extra time gear, which will slow it down. It it takes uh, the edge off and it'll maybe see if you have to you know, turf out your skim and have to mix more or something. Again, if you are new and you're learning all these things, you should be trying to start off in smaller types of jobs. Um, you know, small walls, small ceilings, patches maybe. Patches I do think, all of that being said, can be very tricky and I think it, there's a, there can be a lot more skill in doing a patch than there can be in just doing one wall one flat wall with not much happening on it, maybe one socket or maybe no sockets um, or a plasterboard wall can be a, a bit easier to learn on that and then get, once you get used to the materials and the tools the flare. Again a plastering trial, some of these trials, I guess trial for instance here has been brilliant to get out of the box but most of your, your normal skimming trials that you buy still need a wee bit of breaking in even if they're ready to go they will leave that couple of wee lines and you'll find the more and not only the more you plaster the more you use that trial you'll get better as you will get better with time but the trial itself will actually get better because you'll be breaking it in and it'll wearing it in and it'll feel more comfortable to hold and it'll actually leave less lines because it's not got such a sharp corner on it or such a sharp bevel on it so it will glide over the plaster better and it will take the lines out better and smooth the plaster in faster and with, with less you know with less sort of concentration you will know, find as you speed up and the trial becomes more broken it will also help you speed up which is great and um, I heard somebody say a joke before that plastering trials actually the, they become worth more as they age, kind of like 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 a fine wine, and it does tend to be true. Again, most of these super fast trials be grand straight out of the box. Um, the Ragnar one here. <laughs> 